what makes handbags so iconic. Hi, I'm Sammy Love and welcome back to my channel. If this isn't your first time here, thank you so much for coming back because I have an exciting video planned for you today. If this is your first time here, thank you so much for stopping by. Feel free to give this video a like and subscribe for more fashion and lifestyle videos and for more handbag history videos if you're feeling it. If you are wondering about my background, I am currently at my parents' house, which is where I normally shoot my videos at the moment. I am living with my boyfriend, we just moved in together, and I really don't feel like, you know, bringing the camera stuff, you know, cramming everything because, you know, only you could see the lengths I go to, just everything I incorporate, I don't really want to make our space crowded so i decided to utilize my now empty space at my parents house to continue shooting my videos for you guys it's my studio which makes me feel so cool i love getting these videos out to you guys and i cannot wait to unpack this video for you today this handbag history episode in general is going to be very exciting for me to unpack because i own the item that we are discussing today i get to offer more insight into to the bag that I wouldn't get to offer, you know, with the bags that I talk about that I don't own. We're still gonna unpack the distribution, the inspiration, the design, all the things that I would do in any other handbag history episode. All the aspects that go into creating a handbag that people don't really think of on the surface level of things. I love all of the deep nitty gritty information that goes into these bags, goes into the name of these bags, goes into the shape, the materials that the bag is distributed in. I like to know it all. So please give me another bag to dive into and I will have a wonderful time just reiterating it to you guys. With that being said, let's dive into the brief history of the House of Dior's beloved handbag, the Lady Dior. The Lady Dior was originally nicknamed the Shoo Shoo in 1994 upon its launch from the house of Christian Dior. The bag stitching pattern is actually called canning and it's used amongst many of Dior's scarves, jewelry, and accessories in general. If you really look closely, you will see this pattern in a lot of Dior's other pieces. The personal stitching pattern is said to stand for majesty and prestige, which is very fitting for Dior. It might might look familiar to you because this is a pattern that I remember seeing on old kitchen seats. That's because they are actually the Napoleon III's chairs. You are actually used chairs like this that featured these patterns and they were also used by the first attendants of their fashion shows and the first customers of the House of Dior. I'm also so sorry there's mowing going on outside. I'm hoping that it doesn't impact the video. I guess we'll see during editing. What differentiates Dior from other fashion houses but then positions it closer with fashion houses like Chanel is that Dior is quite elegant in its pieces. Now coming out of the wartime era, onlookers were very, very skeptical about what the new look was gonna be for women's style. Christian Dior stepped out and you know, he was very, very posh, very structured with his looks. And that was something that onlookers had not seen before. However, you know, the 1950s was kind of known to step out of the norm. The House of Chanel was a key brand in introducing pants. 50s and 60s were kind of that window of stepping away from the tight corsets, the I can't breathe, chic <laughs> You see this a lot with Dior that a lot of their creations are blunt with shapes. You'll see this from casual all the way to evening wear, a lot of squared off shoulders, maybe tight in the middle, but you know, very shaped at the bottom, also shaped at the top. Architecture is very impactful in the eyes of fashion. You most people think architecture and they immediately think buildings. They immediately think that 
you know, architecture is only tailored toward how a building is supposed to be creatively designed. And I feel like that's unfair. Dior is one of those fashion houses that pushes back against this rule. Architecture is design, and that's why it should be incorporated in the fashion that designs something with dimensions, with angles that is non-traditional. I feel like, you know, you can say the same thing for Balenciaga, Bottega, Prada. A lot of brands push back against this idea that architecture is only reserved for construction and buildings. And let's just talk if all handbags are made the same. Then there would really be no way to show the creative differences. What makes it unique is the stories behind them, the inspirations that went into making them, the designs, why is it made like that? Because of the materials used, how is it gonna be attired? I find things like that just so interesting. In the video below, you can see the process of how the Lady Dior is made. I encourage all of you to watch this video if you haven't seen how handbags are made or if you just haven't seen how this bag in particular is made. Even though it's more of a smaller bag, I feel like it could apply to each size version of the bag. So feel free to give it a watch. I'll leave the link down below. Now we're going to jump into the inspiration behind the bag. You'll find that I normally do this first before design. But I do feel like the inspiration for the shoe shoot that later stemmed into the Lady Dior, the inspirational part of that really came after the design for the bag. During the time of the mid-90s, Dior was under the lead of Gianfranco Ferre. When this bag was released, it caught the eyes of one woman in particular that would change the way the line was looked at forever. Princess Diana purchased numerous versions of the shoe shoe for her own personal use. She was photographed with it, you know, at a children's hospital in Birmingham. She was also photographed wearing it in Argentina. It was at this time that millions all over the world had seen this bag. Safe to say that it had kind of risen to be a bag status. Everyone wanted this bag because it was seen on Lady Diana. Dior decides to release the shoe shoe under a new name, a much more fitting name at this point. It reissues the bag under the name Lady Dior. A large part of Diana's influence was based on her ability to stand out on her own and the fact that she conducted her royal responsibilities out of compassion and less out of routine. A woman with this strength and compassion would be an ideal woman for any bag that perceives itself as elegant or feminine. About six years earlier, the Ferragamo Lady D was named after the fame linked to the bag and Lady Diana. Since I personally own the Lady Dior, what's special about this handbag history episode in particular is that I'm able to actually show you the item I'm giving you historical information about. It just helps a lot when I actually have it. This is the Lady Dior. This is the dust bag it comes in. I love to keep this bag in a dust bag. Any bag you have, it's very, very, very smart to keep it in the dust bag because, you know, if you want to resell it, you know, the dust bag is very nice to have. And also because of the fact that it keeps your bag clean, it keeps the exterior looking nice. So looking at the exterior of the bag first, you see what I talked about before with the pattern of the canning. It is spread all throughout the exterior of the bag and I think it looks quite elegant. That's what drew me to the bag first and foremost was the design I feel like is so elegant. Unless you get it in a more canvasy pattern, I could see it being able to be more casual in that case. But this in particular, I do find it hard to dress down. I do feel like when I wear it, I do feel very dressed up, but I am someone that likes to dress up. So it's not something that keeps me from not wearing the bag. I will say one thing I do adore about the ABC Dior straps is that they're a lot thicker and more ideal. Um, they do have a section at Dior where they do sell straps and you could get a strap for the bag, any bag that you own Dior. So um, we also have the charms. I love the charms. However, I do find them hard from getting kind of like wear on them. I try to like wipe them off and clean them, but when you wear something, it's gonna look worn and that's just the way it is. Going inside the bag, I'm gonna try my best to describe this um, because I know it's hard with the lighting and everything inside the bag. It is a flap opening. 
So if things fall out of your bag, everything falls out. That is a con. This bag does feature just a pocket compartment right here, um, a zip closure where you will find the ID tag, um, the book that shows you how to upkeep the bag, all that jazz. There's no exterior pockets. All of the pockets are inside. As for pockets in general, I will say there's just two and there's just the main middle compartment. It fits my 13 inch MacBook. It still looks nice. They do hold their value. The material does hold up well. Can't complain. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to give this video a thumbs up to let me know that I'm doing a good job. While I've got you here, feel free to check out my previous hand bike history video on the Louis Vuitton Alma. If you want to be a part of the decision making process of my next bag and what that bag will be, please comment down below what bags you want to see me dive into and you may see the bag you chose on my next video. I hope I gave you great insight into the history of the Lady Dior bag that you didn't already know going into this video. I love making these handbag history videos because I also learn new things myself. Down below you'll find my sources, the music used, and my social medias. Subscribe to my channel for fashion and lifestyle videos. I'll see you guys next time.